I'd originally learned how to play piano, and I was a big Pete Townsend fan. And you really can't smash a piano. Well, you could, but it would be a lot of work. So there was always a guitar around the house. I figured, you know, I'm 19, I'm not going to be a professional athlete. NBA was also out of the question. People said I wasn't tall enough. So I thought, you know, if I'm going to be like Pete Townsend, I better play guitar because that's the only way I'm going to get chicks. Jobs sucked. I used to have to drive around and sell paint to body shops and sandpaper and stuff like that. And so I used to screw off all the time and go to music stores and hang out. And I saw this really cool plastic guitar one day that's in East Point, Michigan on the headstock. I just loved the guitar. And the fact that it was from the Detroit area blew me away because I didn't realize that there was, you know, guitar companies here. And there weren't except for him. I figured they were using sandpaper making the guitar somewhere. So uh, one day I showed up at the shop with a bunch of sandpaper in my hand, beating on the door and introduced myself to him and started hanging out with him a little bit. Look, he was stalking me. Okay? I was full on. Sandpaper is the way to a man's heart, obviously. And, uh, basically said he wanted to work for us. Uh, and said, look, I can put you in charge of sandpaper or you can come to the NAMM show with us and sell guitars. And he figured that he could sell sandpaper, he could sell guitars. Joe can listen to somebody play and, and pick up on their style of playing and sort of figure out how to match the, the gear to what they're looking to do. A lot of that has to do with his, his education in engineering and graphic design and guitar luthering and all that stuff. During college, I played guitar and then repaired guitars. And one thing led to another and I started designing guitars. Naylor's got this great reputation for understanding guitar tone and somebody can come up to him and say when I play lead I want to sound like Mark Knopfler and I want my rhythms to sound like Eddie Van Halen. It's, it's just a talent that he was born with. When I was a kid I used to work on my toys and I used to build model airplanes and explosives and people across the industry have a lot of respect for John and uh, I do too most of the time. Ken is the general manager of Reverend and he runs the day-to-day -day operation. He's also in charge of artist relations and sales. Basically, he keeps the train running. He's also a, a gigging guitar player too, so he's you know, always out there promoting the Reverend name. When I started, originally all that I did was sales, and then over the course of the last six or seven years, that's turned into all of the outside sales. I deal with all the dealers. When we set up artist endorsement deals, I handle all that stuff. And and so now I'm running the business end, handling all of the ordering, sales, and the ins and outs, and the daily running of the business so that Joe is freed up to do nothing but concentrate on guitar. It's a combination of looks and function, really. If you look at a Reverend guitar, you can tell that it's influenced by the classics which go back to the 50s and 60s designs. So the look is very important because it's, it's the guitar you strap it on, you, you wear it. He'll come up with new designs based on what he sees uh, going on in the music industry. That's what he gets to concentrate on. He likes that, the nuts and bolts and the mechanic of the guitar. Besides the way it looks, uh, of course, it's, it's a musician, musician's tool, so everything has to work. In that respect, uh, uh, everything is specifically designed for the instrument by myself based on over 20 years of experience as a repair tech. All these components, the hardware, stuff that you could buy basically anywhere. In other words, if you're on tour somewhere and something breaks, you can uh, find parts for these guitars, no problem. The pickups, which are really the heart of the sound, are designed by myself as well, are specifically designed for each guitar. Uh, so everything kind of works together as a system and it all comes together as a working tool uh, for musicians. He can watch somebody play and come up with, with gear that's going to complement what they're doing and then, uh, and then he can listen to 
a band or a genre and design the perfect guitar for that band. So that's why he's got such a huge reputation in this industry. I mean, having um, a successful amp line named after him and then what everything we've achieved at Reverend in the last 15 years. At a repair store, you know, we bought and sold vintage and used instruments. And that sort of morphed into nailer amplifiers, you know, all hand built, uh, very expensive. And I did that for a couple of years and I figured I'd have a better shot with guitars. I said well, that's what I was really formally trained in guitars, not amplifiers. So I sold my interest in that company to my business partner, took that money and started Reverend Guitars. I was actively looking for a name for the company and I was reading Blues Review magazine. They saw an article on Reverend Gary Davis and saw the word Reverend and immediately knew that was it. I figured it's a memorable name, it has reference to the blues and it refers to being held in reverence. Not really a religious thing as it was a reverence thing been evolving the designs for the last almost 20 years now. It's been uh, I guess 17 years. And we're not afraid to move ahead and, and make things better if we think it's going to be better. Everything continues to evolve with Reverend and that's part of our philosophy.